Uh, my name is Brian Reynolds, and um, I'm with uh, Wild Delight Bird Food. Uh, we're based in Stephen, Minnesota. It's a, it's a family and employee-owned uh, company, and uh, we're very proud of the fact that we put out great products. So um, thank you for attending, and thanks uh, to Allsip for setting this up. And um, I'm going to um, kind of go through some uh, steps, and it's going to be pretty basic. Um, it's kind of like from the beginner. And then if you have questions um, uh, throughout the the presentation, please uh, do that. Put the questions in, comments and likes. Uh, and as we go through, Alsip is going to take the comments and the likes and anybody that uh, signed, uh, that does that it will be entered into the raffle for um, some very nice prizes, um, that, uh, some that I will be providing and some that Alsip will be providing. And then also there's um, anybody that buys a um, $20 feeder or higher gets a free bag of um, our Wild Delight Nut and Berry which is our number one seller. And that's about a $15 value on, on, on the food. So anyways, I'm going to uh, jump into it. And again, this is kind of for the beginner. So some of you guys out there probably know more about birds than I do if you've been doing it for a long time. So I'll do the best I can to hit every level of knowledge. And uh, again, if you have a question, put it in there. We'll try to answer it at the end. So how to attract birds? To my backyard? That's a big question that a lot of people have, and there's a lot of ways to do that. And the biggest way is to feed the birds, because if you put bird food out there, they're probably going to come visit. Um, there are other things that you can do to increase the number of birds and the different variety of birds that come to your yard. And some of those are putting out the welcome mat, and that is making your backyard um, a sanctuary for birds. If you have a, a dog on a leash, um, that is going to hinder the number of birds that come to your area. If you put up your bird feeders next to um, uh, a busy uh, a road, you're probably not going to get as many birds. So if you can put your bird feeder in your backyard by some trees and bushes, you'll get a lot more birds. Uh, next is preferring preparing the proper menu. And what, what we mean by that is you can buy um, a 20 pound bag of bird food for $4, but you get what you pay for. And if you don't put out the right food, you're not going to attract the number of birds and the variety of birds that you're looking to get. And I assume if you're participating in this, that you really do uh, like watching birds. And if you want to do that, We'll get into it a little bit later about the exact types of uh, nuts and seeds and fruits that they like. So uh, make sure you put out the right type of food and also the right type of feeder. And we'll get into that a little bit more, too. Uh, keep it clean. So um, bird food and, and its nature, uh, it can get a little messy if it sits in the feeder for a while. Um, so make sure you're cleaning your feeders out and a good uh, rule of thumb is a 10% bleach uh, mix with warm water, and that will clean it out pretty good and um, keep the birds healthy as well. So you want to eliminate any threats. So if you have a cat that is an outside cat, um, cats kill o over 2 million birds. It's estimated 2 million birds a year um, just from cats taking down birds. Um, so if you can keep that cat away, or um, maybe put a bell on the cat, um, that'll help save some of the birds. So again, just eliminate any threats, cats, dogs, um, you know, anything like that. Uh, keep it safe. Try not to use uh, pesticides and that type of thing around where you use uh, your bird feeder, and that will uh, also help um, the birds. Remove any obstacles. Try not to set up your bird uh, feeders by windows. Um, as we've all experienced, birds do fly into windows and, um, you know, if you can keep it away from a window, that's a great thing. Last thing. And one of the most important things is a water source. Um, I know also carries a wide variety of, um, bird baths and, uh, different types of, uh, ways to provide water for the birds. So important. Um, just putting out food is great and 
they'll be fine. But if you can put out a water source, you will probably double the number of birds that you can attract to your backyard. You want to keep that water clean and uh, keep it fresh. And um, you can also buy um, heaters. So even in the winter, it won't freeze over so that uh, they have fresh water year round. So what type of birds will I find in my area? So I'm in St. Louis area and you know, you guys probably, most of you are up in um, Chicago area. Nope. Sorry, my bad on that. Let me go back. Uh, no, I'll just keep going. I'll talk about it at the end. Uh, what birds will I find in the Midwest? So we define the Midwest in many different ways. So, um, and if you buy some bird books, <laughs> I'm sorry it's, that I'm screwing up, but we'll try to get this straight. Um, if you buy bird books, um, you know, about birds, about books, about birds, you will find that there are hundreds of different definitions of different geographies around the country. But for the most part, these are the, the birds that you will find um, uh, in your area. So finches, um, there are many different types of finches. Um, the the most common would be a goldfinch, and those are the yellow ones, and they're very beautiful, especially in the springtime. Um, I have several different feeders out in my backyard, and it's not unusual in April, May timeframe for me, a little different for you guys, um, to have 30 finches out at one time. Uh, in the, and they do change color um, throughout the year, so sometimes there'll be an olive uh, drab looking color. Um, but um, they're beautiful birds, especially when they turn that golden color, golden yellow. Um, there are house finch, which are the little red ones that you'll see, have a little red tint to them. Robins, um, again, it's not a bird that most people are trying to attract to their feeder, but um, you'll see many of them. Uh, robins will eat out of a feeder, believe it or not, if uh, you put bugs in your food. Uh, Orioles. Uh, Orioles are uh, fruit eaters. Uh, chickadees are the little black ones with the red, uh, um, the black ca uh, cap on their head. Tough little birds. Blue jays, everybody knows what a blue jay is. Juncos are a little dark colored bird with dark eyes. Uh, again, uh, not a bird that you're probably trying to attract to your feeder. Most people that are doing that are trying to attract the colorful birds. Uh, Bluebirds um, are the second most. Um, uh, wanted bird at bird feeders, and I'll get into how to attract those a little bit later. Uh, woodpeckers, many different varieties of woodpeckers, probably my favorite uh, bird. Um, you know, some of them are 18 inches uh, and then all the way down to, say, four inches. They're very colorful birds. Um, uh, they're probably my favorite. Um, uh, okay. Uh, doves, morning doves. Uh, they're basically ground uh, feeders, um, but they make great sound, a very soothing sound. They're nice to have around, and they're larger birds. Cardinals, um, for you Cubs fans, uh, cardinals are the number one bird that people are trying to attract to their uh, feeders. Uh, beautiful birds. Uh, gross beak. Um, I'll show you a picture of those here in a minute. Um, kind of look like a cardinal a little bit with some black on them, uh, more black and white um, and a little bit of red. And then you have nut, nut hatches. And then you, you're probably saying, well, I get all these other birds. There's probably dozens more that you're attracting uh, to your area. But those are the most common. Uh, here are some pictures of uh, some of the birds that I spoke about. Um, the, the top left is a um, tufted titmouse. I didn't actually speak about that one, but those are cute little birds. They're tiny and um, they're a little bit skittish. So they like to come to the feeder when uh, most of the other birds are not around. Um, and then if we go around uh, clockwise, that's the goldfinch there. And again, it's not unusual to have uh, as many as a dozen or 30 of those on your feeders at, um, you know, when they are migrating through your area. Um, so if we go again clockwise, that's the gross beak. That's the, the black, white, and with the red on the chest. Those are a little bit rare, but they're beautiful birds. And then obviously the uh, blue jay there in the middle. Uh, blue jays are the bullies of the bird world. 
they're they're very large. They have a large beak. And um, for those of the, you guys that, that do feed on a regular basis, I'm sure you've seen it. They come flying in. They will probably land on a branch close to the feeder, and they squawk like a crow. They just make all this big, loud noise. And it's basically to say, hey, the big dog's coming to eat. Get out of the way. So the blue jay will make all this noise. Most of the birds will scatter. Uh, the blue jay will come in and get what he wants, and then he'll fly away. But they're beautiful birds, and they're lo they're large. And then you have a nuthatch on the other um, down in the left corner. Uh, here's a few more. Uh, top left there, that's a black-capped chickadee. They're small birds, but they're hardy. They um, they will fight at the feeder for the food, even though they're a very small bird. Um, I like to watch those quite a bit. The second picture there uh, going across the top is a red-bellied woodpecker. And you'll notice that there's no red on his belly, only red on his head. Um, so how they came up with that name, I'm not really sure. Uh, the red-bellied woodpecker has uh, red on the nape of his neck, on the back of his neck. So how they came up with these names, I'm not sure. But they're beautiful birds. They're large. And uh, they're, they're, uh, I, I really like the woodpeckers. Three is obviously the cardinal. Um, it has the black mask. Some people call it the robber of um, uh, birds because of that. Then you have the nuthatch. And then down uh, back to the left again on the middle, that's a northern flicker, which is uh, very similar to a woodpecker, um, but kind of a, a drabish yellow color for the most part. Um, then uh, number six there is the eastern bluebird which is the number two bird that people are trying to attract to their feeders. They're beautiful. They got a little rust on their chest. Uh, seven, I'm not exactly sure. I think that's a wren. Um, number eight is the morning dove. Uh, number nine is a, um, a hairy woodpecker, um, very similar to a downy woodpecker um, with, without the red on the head. Uh, number 10, I'm not exactly sure what that is. Number 11 is your uh, blue jay again with a, a large nut. And then number 12 is, um, and I might not be saying it correctly, but it's a pileated woodpecker. Um, they're about 18 to 20 inches tall, and it's kind of the woody woodpecker um, woodpecker. So that's, that's that one. Okay, so what are the different types of bird food that I can use? So basic bird food. So when I say basic, I'm not talking about the ingredients or anything like that. I'm talking about the top right-hand corner picture there um, where you might buy a bag of uh, bird food and it has seeds and nuts and fruits in it. So that's, that's your basic bird food. And then below that, you'll see the suet. And those are very, um, they're very inexpensive and they're great to put out because they provide a lot of energy for the birds. Uh, you can use them year round, but Definitely in the winter when birds can't get some of the nutrients that they need, these are a great option. They're very inexpensive and also has a wide variety of uh, suets. They, I'm guessing, but they might have 50 different types and also suet feeders that you can buy there. Um, so uh, the last, uh, the larger picture there is a block and a block feeder. Uh, and that's one of the items that we'll be giving away today. Um, now. Um, these are not as widely used as the other, uh, as your basic bird food or the suet, but I love to use the blocks and I'll tell you why. So uh, for those of you who feed, you know that um, a bird will typically fly in, they'll pick the seed they want, and then they fly away. Sometimes they'll stay around for a little bit, but then they fly away. And what they do is they either take that food away and they eat it, or give it to the young, or they hide it in a tree. So you'll see them fly up into a tree and put it into the side of a piece of bark, and they'll save it for later, just like a squirrel does. So the difference with the block is they have to actually sit there and peck and try to get a piece out of there because it's like a little brick. So it's condensed bird food within a gel, and then it's hardened. So they actually have to sit there and peck at it to try to get it out. 
And sometimes that can take them, you know, 30 seconds or a minute to get it out of there. So you actually get to watch them for a little while and, and see how they behave and, you know, get a better view of them. And um, so in my backyard, I have all of these options available. Um, so a bird could fly in and grab any seed or nut or fruit that they want. And all they have to do is grab it and go. So why would they go to the block and have to do all that work to get a piece out of there? Well, it's part of their instinct to go and peck and try to get that out of there. So even though they could just come in, simply grab the seed and go, they will stick around and peck on that uh, block and try to get exactly what they want out of there. So it's kind of a, a way to actually see them and enjoy them a little bit better than, um, you know, just having them come in and fly away. Okay. Um, what makes the wild delight bird food different than the others out there? Um, so first off, we only use premium, premium ingredients. Uh, we don't use any fillers. And fillers are put into a bag to make it weigh five pounds or 10 pounds or 20 or whatever it is. And it's cheap ingredients and it, you know, provides for a lower retail, but not a good feeding experience. So we only use premium, premium ingredients. And I'm going to list off the most often used ingredients that we use. And those are sunflower seeds, sunflower kernels, safflower. <clears throat> excuse me, peanuts, um, pistachios, pumpkin seeds, <clears throat> excuse me, um, cherries, apples, raisins, cranberries, juniper berries, and papaya. Those are what we use. So you won't find any corn, milo, or millet in any of our formulas. And um, those are just a way for the, the manufacturer of other bird food to um, save a little bit of money and put a uh, product out there at a lower cost. Um, the second thing that makes us different is we have locked formulas. And what that means is every time that you buy a bag of, this is woodpecker, it is the same mix every single time. So if the price of pistachios goes through the roof, we don't take pistachios out of the bag and put something that's cheaper into the bag. We every time you buy this, you're getting the exact same formula every single time. There are companies out there that will change ingredients uh, based on uh, commodity costs and different things like that. And we don't do that. So you're getting the same product every single time. Uh, one of the um, last things here, uh, we add vitamins and minerals to all of our products. We're the only company that I know of that does that. Um, and that was through this year. So if anybody's changed, I don't know, but we're the only ones that add the vitamins and minerals. Why is that important? It's just like for us, if we take a multivitamin every day, we're probably gonna be healthier. And um, these are um, nutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins that they can't get in nature. So uh, some of those are vitamins A, C, D, E, uh, B12, riboflavin, iron, calcium, different things like that. And there's probably 50 different um, vitamins and minerals that are added into here. All of it's listed on the back. And again, why is it important? Well, it just makes the birds healthier. It makes them live longer. Uh, they're more young survive. Um, the shell um, of the egg is a little bit uh, harder so that again, more, more babies are born. Um, and it just makes it, uh, you know, just a a better experience. Some of it's for, you know, their circulatory system and different things like that, but it's important for the birds to uh, keep them all healthy. All right, a couple of unique products that, that uh, we have that most people, uh, most of the other companies don't have and might solve a, an issue for you. Um, sizzling heat. So this is, um, we have a small bag, large bag, a block, and then a suet. And the number one reason that people leave the hobby of bird feeding is um, squirrels. So the squirrels either eat all the food or they tear up the feeder trying to get to the food. So we came up with this uh, along with Cornell University. Um, and this product has capsaicin or peppers. 
uh, spray it on each uh, through the tumbler. So um, birds have very limited taste buds, so they can't taste spicy or bitter. Um, and squirrels don't like the spicy. So um, this was about a seven year process. Um, uh, and um, along with Cornell to come up with the right formula. So uh, you can find uh, a mix out there that is either liquid or powder that you pour into your bag of food and then mix it up. But it's not going to get on every single piece. You might get it on your fingers and then rub your eye. So this is already taken care of for you, and it'll keep the squirrels away from your food. I'm going to be perfectly honest. It's about 95 to 98 percent effective. Um, I live in a wooded area about 30 miles from downtown St. Louis, and I have hundreds of squirrels in my backyard. And there are one or two that will eventually get up into the feeder and try to eat a few pieces. But after they eat a couple, they jump off and then they'll go in the grass and they wipe their, their face off because they don't like the, the taste of it. Um, the, oops, um, I should have gone to this earlier. Um, there you see the little tiny baby squirrel saying, oh my gosh, it's sizzling heat. I can't eat that. So um, uh, again, um, large bag, small bag, a block and a feeder. And this will, if anybody's having trouble with squirrels, this will definitely help. Um, here's the product called Bugs and Berries that comes in a bag and a block. And this again is to attract uh, bluebirds. So a lot, again, I mentioned earlier that bluebirds are the number two bird that people are trying to get to their feeders. And um, so there wasn't really a great option out there. There were mealworms, but mealworms, a bag of mealworms is kind of expensive, um, but it's a great way to attract the bluebirds. We sell a bag of mealworms and you can mix it in with other foods and that's great. And it'll, I, I put it out every couple of days and I'm telling you, it goes very quickly. Um, but again, it, it has uh, mealworms, darkling beetles and army fly larva, which sounds horrible, but to a bluebird, that is like a filet steak. And they love those items and they will come to that feeder. Um, and, and just eat it all up really quick. Uh, it also has three fruits in it. It has raisins, cranberries, and cherries, and um, also uh, sunflower kernels and safflower. So some people think that um, uh, bluebirds only eat insects, and that is incorrect. They will eat a few of the seeds as well. Um, and then also some people think that birds will only eat live bugs, and that is also incorrect. Um, they will eat these um, uh, dehydrated uh, mealworms, the beetles, and the, the fly larva. And uh, this is a great way to um, attract them into your feeders. Um, if, if you say, well, I don't have bluebirds in my area, it's probably, be probably because you haven't just been feeding the correct food. It is possible that they're not in your area, but it's more likely that they just are not attracted to the food that you're putting out. Um, here's a, a, a picture of most of the items that um, Allsip carries uh, from us. Um, uh, and on the uh, top left, you'll see the little finch sock. And again, anybody that likes or comments um, during this presentation, I'm giving a free uh, finch sock to anybody that wants to come in and uh, pick one up. And I, I would suggest putting it out in early spring or, um, uh, you know, for you guys, probably in the uh, April time frame, um, it has Niger seed in it, and all you do is take it out of the little pink box and hang it up. And they will—it's a feeder and feed in one, and they'll hang right on the feeder and eat out of it. Uh, the the picture right next to it is uh, actually our Niger seed. If you have your own feeder for uh, finches, um, and then uh, going across there, you have our zero waste fruit blend, which is the purple bag. Um, great product, um, has tons of uh, five or seven different fruits in it. Uh, woodpecker mix, uh, which is my favorite. Um, this is one of the ones I use all the time. Even though it's called woodpecker, um, every bird will eat it. It has um, uh, papaya, pumpkin seeds, 
pistachios, raisins, cherries, cranberries. It looks like trail mix. And um, if you put it out, the birds will flock to it. Uh, and then the next four pictures are some of the blocks that we carry. Uh, you'll see on the bottom left there, the mealworms that I spoke about, uh, the fruit and berry that has five different fruits in it. Um, our deck porch and patio, that's our no waste mix. So that has no shells and no none of the garbage fillers that I spoke about earlier. So you can use it on your deck, your porch, or your patio, and it won't cause a mess. Um, then our nut and berry, the green bag in the middle, that's our number one seller uh, nationally. The bugs and berries, cardinal, and then special finch, which on the far right there, um, that is um, uh, Niger and um, sunflower chips. It's a great mix if you're trying to get finches, it'll, they'll be all over it. So that's a, a kind of um, a real quick um, synopsis of all of our products. Um, next page here, uh, top left, frequent buyer club. So if you buy 10 bags of our bird food, we give you the 11th one free. Um, you just mail in the UPC. So you just cut out the UPC here and mail it to us um, once you get 10 of them. And we'll send you a, um, a coupon for a free bag and you can pick it up there at also. Um, and then below that, you'll see that we have a um, partnership with Cornell. Uh, that's a uh, Ivy League school. They have the one of the world's largest um, ornithology departments, which is the study of birds. And um, we do a lot of stuff with them, uh, research and different things like that. But we also have a K through 12 education program, which is actually on hold right now because of all the people that are uh, doing school remotely. But if there's any teachers on here or anybody knows a teacher, they can go to the Cornell Lab website and um, look up the K through 12 education and Wild Delight. And we send um, teachers um, all kinds of lessons and different um, um, things that they can do with their class uh, to, to study birds. We send them free food. We send them the food. Um, so it's a great program once it gets started back up again. Uh, and then um, all of our products have um, the pink ribbon because um, we donate to the American Cancer Society for um, uh, breast cancer. And we're very proud of that. We've been doing that for 10 years. So. Um, it's a, it's a great way to give back a little bit. Um, this is a, a picture of um, the Cornell K through 12 um, um, ma uh, materials that the teacher would receive. And there's lots of different ways that they can uh, use this in their classroom. And again, it's free. It's from an Ivy League school, so it's top-notch stuff. And then you get top-notch product on top of it uh, to use. So it's a great program. Once it gets uh, back up and running, um, it'll be available again. Once uh, you know the kids are back in school, mostly full time. Um, just, um, wild bird uh, feeding industry, uh, it's a great resource. You can see the uh, website there at the bottom. We were one of the founding members and it's just a way to, to make sure that uh, companies aren't you know, putting rocks and sticks in a bag and trying to sell it. And it's, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, cleanliness of the product and you know the contents and trying to get some guidelines in place because there are no guidelines like it is for human food so people can kind of do whatever they want how they want to do it so we're trying to set up some guidelines so that it's a, a better process uh, here are some resources for you um, obviously our website is very useful the WBFI that I just spoke about, and you can see the others. And then the one at the bottom, the, uh, the uh, Cornell, again, if you have any questions about birds, they can answer it. Um, it's a great resource. You can even take classes on there. Some of them are free and then some you have to pay for, but a lot of them are free. It's a great resource to try to, you know, if you want to know more about birds. Um, and it doesn't even have to be backyard birds. It could be ducks or something like that. Um, also, um, I hope you can see this. Um, there are different books that are available. This, um, is probably the most popular. And again, uh, this is Sibley's, uh, Field Guide to Birds of Eastern North America. So 
uh, he has probably 10 of these out and one's for the West and one's for the Southeast and one for the Southwest and the whole geography part, I don't really understand, but um, this is a great resource. Um, it's, um, it's not paperback and it's not hardback. It's kind of in the middle, but um, it, uh, here you go. Here's bluebirds actually. So you can see that it, it walks you through um, what the birds will look like at different stages of the year and also different stages of their life. So if it's a juvenile, a female, a male, and it has um, pictures of their wings out so you can see what it looks like as they might be flying. So um, a great resource here. Uh, these can be found at any bookstore uh, or Amazon and they're about $15 and it's a great deal. There's like 400 pages of birds in here. Um, and maybe two or three birds per page. Uh, Peterson's is also another uh, book that is a great resource. And then uh, available at Allsips uh, Nursery. Um, also, we have and we provide these. These are kids' books, and these are for kids that um, uh, for kids and grandkids, maybe under ten. Um, it's a great little deal to help them learn about birds and bird feeding and little activities that they can do in here. There's also a coupon in the back for you to get a little bit of a break on some of our food. So those are available. Um, and then I also have, um, uh, these are for the adults, um, a resource guide. So a lot of the things that I went over today, like how to attract birds, how to keep them coming back, that's all available in here. There's also in the middle of this, is a feeding chart. So it has some of the more popular birds um, and then what they like to eat and also what kind of feeder uh, they prefer. So the feeder is very important because not every bird can go to every feeder. So if you go to Allsip and you'll see that they have hundreds of bird feeders, um, some of them are designed for finches and some are de designed for all birds and you know lots of different variations. So uh, make sure that you're getting the correct feeder. Um, I had a lady, um, uh, it was probably, well, with all this going on, it was probably about a year ago, maybe a little longer. She said, I'm putting cardinal food out. It says on the bag, cardinal food, but I can't get cardinals to come to my feeder. So I asked her, I said, could you point out a feeder that looks like what you're using? And she was using a, a feeder that had a peg. So um, the reason that the cardinals won't go is because they can't attach their feet to that. Uh, a cardinal's feet are kind of like this. So when they come in, they can't grab it. So they, they could never come to that feeder even if they wanted to. So um, for instance, a cardinal needs a perch, something that they can grab a hold of. And so just knowing what type of feeder you need is a big part of it and uh, will make um, your bird feeding experience uh, much better. Um, I, I showed this a little bit. Um, this is our um, uh, woodpecker mix. And this is what most of our bags look like, um, just with different colors here. Um, but one thing that's important is you'll see a lot of window. When we call this the window that you can see through, uh, we want you to see what's inside our bag. Um, even on the back, you can see we have lots of windows. We want you to see the products because it's high quality. And, um, you know, if you buy a bag that doesn't have any windows, it's probably not a very good mix inside. So just keep that in mind. You want to, if you can see the product it's, and you know that it's good, you're probably getting a quality uh, mix. So I think I'm done and I'm going to try to switch over to where I can get the questions. And hopefully there are some questions and comments. Okay. Oh, okay. We do have some stuff here. Okay. Uh, bluebirds was the first question. So hopefully I answered your question, uh, Hannah. And um, oh, and the next question was, uh, do different types of birds need different types of feeders? So yes, um, as I just spoke about, the feeders are very important. And make sure you're getting the proper one. And if you have any questions, um, uh, I'll, I'll throw my email out if anybody has any questions or they think about them later. 
Um, it's Brian with an I, Brian R. So the name Brian with the letter R at ddcommodities.com. So hopefully you'll get that. If anybody has any questions, they can call maybe also and they can give it to them. But I'd be happy to answer any questions later too. So bluebirds, I think we uh, hit that one. If you just get the correct bird food, you'll have bluebirds coming in. Um, do boot, do uh, birds become reliable on you when you start feeding? No. Um, you'll notice in the summer that you won't have as many birds uh, coming to your feeder. You'll still have them coming in, but when there's an abundance of food naturally, they're going to be out doing that because they would rather be in uh, nature than around your house where there might be some other stuff going on. So um, they do not become dependent. And in wintertime, they are dependent because many times they can't find anything. So uh, being able to provide a, a food for them and especially water. Again, water is big. All right. Um, my finches don't seem to like thistle seed. Why? Well, um, there are different types. Um, so first off, thistle is um, uh, illegal in the United States. Um, it's Niger seed, which is kind of the same thing. But um, so thistle is a um, considered a noxious weed is what it is. Um, farmers hate it because it will try to take over a field. So buy Niger seed. And um, our Niger seed is uh, de-germinated. So um, if, if it does hit the ground, it will not germinate and cause all the weeds. Um, that's the only thing I can think of. There are different um, uh, oil contents of the Niger seed. So maybe um, you got a bad batch and it, it didn't have a high oil content and the birds know that and they probably didn't, um, probably didn't eat it. So, um, maybe just buy a higher quality and um, it, it might take care of that. Um, that's the only thing I could really think of on that one. Um, uh, let's see. Feeder's question again. Um, does suet bring different birds to the feeder? It can, certainly, um, especially in wintertime when they can't find um uh, food in nature, and um, they will definitely come. And it's a very fatty content, which sounds awful, but for them, it's perfect for the winter. Um, does suet spoil? I found some in the garage, but it had no date on it. If it smells bad, it's bad. So the same thing for bird food. Um, if bird food gets wet, it can get kind of gross and nasty. And if it rains for three days, it might you might want to just throw that out and put fresh out. Um, but suet can definitely, if it gets too hot, it might smell bad because um, of the high fat content uh, of the ingredients. So um, if, it, if it smells bad, it probably is bad. And I would just toss it away and get some new. Um, is there a way to keep blue jays and starlings away? Um, that's a common question. So not really. Um, starlings will eat garbage seed. So if you're putting out bad seed, they're more likely to be around. They don't really eat the, the premium ingredients. They like the, they're many times considered the catfish of the bird world. Um, and they, they're bullies too. So they, you know, drive all the other birds off. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they like the, the milo, the millet, and the corn. So if you don't put those three ingredients out, you probably not. You probably will keep the starlings away. Um, and the blue jays, there's really nothing you can do. And I, I know they're kind of bullies, but it's just kind of how it is. Um, uh, do do you have low waste with this? We do have uh, many low waste mix. Uh, most of our products actually are that way. Um, so we consider no waste, meaning there's no shells also. Uh, but all of our products are no waste as far as every single piece in here. So I don't know how many pieces are in here. Let's say there's 20,000 pieces in here. They will eat every single piece of this. Whereas if you buy a, a lower quality seed, uh, seed mix, 
they might only eat 5% of it. Um, if you buy the really low end, they're probably only eating maybe half of a percent. And that's the, the, uh, the one little morsel of um, sunflower seed that you'll find in there. So um, again, if you use a higher quality uh, bird food, you're gonna get a better feeding experience. Your feeders will actually stay uh, full longer because the birds, uh, you've, see, you've all seen it, they come in and they dig through and try to find the one seed that they're looking for. Well, with our food, they don't do that because it's, it's all great stuff. So they're gonna eat every single piece. You, they're, they're like chickens, you know, they'll scatter it all around on the lower quality stuff. So if you buy a higher quality food, you're gonna have a much um, better feeding experience. Um, I'm gonna throw this out while I'm trying to read the next question. Has, any, has anybody ever seen uh, cardinals? They're, they mate for life. So they, um, they pair up and you'll see the male and the female typically together all the time. And um, they actually know what the other one likes to eat. They learn that. So if uh, the female sees that the male likes pistachios, she'll, she'll take her beak and push pistachios over to the male and vice versa. Um, it's pretty cool to watch when you, when you see them do that. Um, also in the cardinal world, this is kind of interesting. <clears throat> Um, their typical roles are uh, opposite of uh, humans' um, typical role. I, I don't know, probably not the right word, but the male uh, feeds the babies and the female goes and builds the nests. So it's kind of a, a role reversal of what's typical from the 1950s. So don't yell at me, but that's what, kind of where I'm getting at. They're, they're great to watch because they stay together. And um, you can tell they really care for each other because they will, they stay close to each other. Uh, they watch out for each other and they'll even try to uh, feed each other. Um, so it's kind of cool to watch. Um, uh, do other birds eat the bluebird food? Yes. Um, if you use, um, I don't have them here, but uh, yes, our bugs and berries, Every bird that we talked about earlier will come in. They just won't eat the bugs. They'll eat the, the berries and they'll eat the nuts. So yes, all birds will eat that, but they just won't eat the, um, the uh, bugs from that. Will the seeds that are left behind cause issue with weeds growing under our feeder? Only if it's in a shell. And um, typically, um, it's not going to happen unless you're using the Milo, the Millet, the, again, the low-end stuff. Um, <clears throat> you typically are not going to have an issue. And again, our Niger seed, which um, comes from the Middle East and India, um, it's um, brought up to a temperature of like 250 degrees. So it kind of degerminates it. So it will not germinate uh, if it hits the ground. Um, how do we get the free bag after 10? So there are envelopes um, that I'm, I'll make sure I send some to um, Allsip so that they have them. You take the little envelope, uh, it's a little white envelope about this size, and you put the um, UPCs in there and then you mail it off to our company and we send you a coupon for a free bag, which you could take to Allsip, and then we reimburse Allsip for that bag. Um, all of the information about our um, uh, frequent buyer program can be found on the back of our bags or also on our website. Um, so um, it's, it's a pretty easy thing. It's basically 10% off every time you buy a bag if you do it that way. Um, let's see. Orioles. Uh, a question about when when should, should you start looking for Orioles? I am probably not the best person to ask because we don't make any Oriole food or uh, feeders. Um, they're typically late spring through summer. Um, but to be perfectly honest with you, I would probably Google that one because um, uh, I, I could be telling you wrong. But for me here, um, even though I don't feed them, um, late spring through summer is when I see them flying around. Okay. Uh, hummingbirds, uh, the way to best way to attract hummingbirds in the spring and summer. Again, I'm probably not the best because that's not something that we uh, sell or make. 
um, but uh, also has a wide variety of uh, hummingbird food, hummingbird feeders, hummingbird uh, um, the little trays that um, would attract the men. Um, also, um, Orioles. So a lot of the Oriole and uh, hummingbird stuff is all found in one spot there at Alsip, and I'm sure they have a, a I know they have a wide variety of options. Um, the best way to attract them, I think, is just to use the the sugar water or oranges and things like that. Uh, Orioles really love oranges. So if you just cut an orange in half and put it out, they'll come in and they'll eat off of that. I think that was the last question. Um, I hope you learned something or, or found this at least a little bit useful. Um, we're, I want to thank everybody who attended and uh, for asking questions and uh, thank also for setting this up. Um, you know, we, we love to get information out about birds and bird feeding because it's, um, you know, it's, it's the number two leisure time activity in the United States behind gardening. And it's not that far behind. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people are the same, but uh, over 60 million people feed birds every year. Now, sometimes maybe they're only buying one bag a year and putting it out. Um, but uh, it's become a um, the increase in the number of people feeding birds in 2020 was phenomenal. Um, we are stuck at home. We're not allowed to travel. My company, we're, they're not letting us travel with the uh, pandemic. But our sales, <laughs> maybe they don't need us, but um, our sales were up almost 50% in 2020. And it was basically all new people coming to the hobby. So it's, um, you know, it's a very soothing thing. Um, you know, I, I never fed birds until I uh, started this job. And now, you know, take a cup of coffee and go sit out and watch the birds for a little bit. It's very soothing. It's relaxing. Um, it's, it's a, it's a great hobby and, um, you, you know, it's, uh, it's very enjoyable for me. And, uh, and, you know, there's obviously so many people doing it. So it is for, you know, I think for a lot of people, um, once again, last thing, um, I'll give you my email address in case somebody has a question that they didn't think of. I'd be happy to try to answer it. It's Brian R, Brian with an I, the letter R, at ddcommodities.com. And um, that's it. So thank you so much. Everybody have a great weekend. And um, I hope it went well. Thank you.